Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, October 9th, 2024. Let's get into it. And all you people that gave me so much stuff about lighting, how does this look? The lights are up. All right, so let's get into the video. I just, uh, so I wanted to start uh, with the most important thing uh, that I think that everybody needs to do. You know, we've, we've have all those people in North Carolina that are not going to be able to vote. You know, they're stuck up in the mountains and uh, God knows, I mean, I, I've done videos on that. Uh, I, I'm more concerned about Florida at this point, so I won't be really talking about that event. I think I've done enough uh, video on that. Uh, good Lord, 4,000 body bags on order. Maybe 2,000 people dead. Uh, bodies in trees. I mean, my God, I, I can't even imagine. Uh, but hopefully uh, we won't see that here in Florida because what I witnessed today on my way to vote Please, people, vote, vote, vote. Put your ballot in, okay? Uh, it's the most important thing that you can do. Uh, let's watch my video on me casting my vote today. All right, so I'm here at the local library. Look at this monster tree. Isn't that amazing? We got some crazy trees here in Florida. Anyway, just so that you know, I walk the walk and talk the talk. I came here... This is the Bellevue Public Library. Thought I was gonna drop off my vote, but instead I have to drive 16 miles up into Ocala to be able to get my vote in today before the hurricane hits. And this is what you gotta do, people, if you're a citizen of the United States. Let's get going. All right, so the wind is picking up. I finally made it to the voting center. This is the Marion County Election Center. I didn't even know this place existed. <laughs> but, uh, and it took me an hour to get here. And now it's going to take me an hour to get home. But this is how important it is, people. You have to get out. You have to vote. Otherwise, don't be bitching about how your life sucks. Now the storm will go. Ooh, can you believe this wind already? Ah, uh, anyway, my vote's in. Let's get home and make a video. All right, now, that video didn't do justice because <laughs> it didn't show you what I went through to get to the damn voting place. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, now, the media is going to say that, you know, Floridians are stupid people and there's probably people down there by the coast and some of them can't evacuate. You have to understand that. They're, you know, they're just like... You know, where am I going to go? I mean, I, I don't have the money to afford a hotel room. FEMA is not going to give me anything, you know. And, and so if I leave my house, so there's going to be 15-foot storm surges coming in on the coast. And, and, and I'm sure that a lot of people are going to die. But at the same time, uh, you got 5 million people evacuated in the area. I mean, my God, 75 was packed. So I'm on 35 trying to get to the voting place. I didn't, you know, because that's a diversion. You, you, if your GPS, if you're following the GPS and traffic's backed up on 75, it'll divert you over to 35. And so I got, <laughs> I got into all that damn traffic. And I, I was like, what the hell's going on? What the, where did all these cards come from? And of course, then, you know, it hit me in the head. I was like, holy shit. You know, so everybody is obeying the evacuation order that can. Okay, understand that. So when your media portrays that people died during this coming event. But I, I did want to kind of uh, go into uh, what what I remember. I mean, I you know, I, unfortunately, I'm an old dude. <laughs> Any young people watching this, they won't understand what I'm going to talk about now. But I remember... Back in the day, what was it, 2000, I, 2002? When, when did Katrina come across? It was right around that time period. Anyway, I mean, it was a monster storm. I mean, the, the, the satellite pictures showed the entire Gulf of Mexico with one huge cloud. And I just kept thinking, how in the hell are those people going to survive when this monster comes up on shore? Well... Let's look at the satellite picture <laughs> of Hurricane uh, Milton. 
Oh my god! All right, so that, that, I told you I'm going to keep you updated on the hurricane as best I can. I know I'm just watching other people. Uh, you know, Mr. Weatherman, I, I'm going to steal his video next. Uh, this is from nine hours ago. Let's watch his video on what the hurricane is doing now. Let's get back to what's going on here. Let's start with what's going on first. Looking at the satellite presentation, it's a little more elongated. Uh, I don't want to get too sciencey, but uh, that is telling me that something's kind of affecting it and that the front up here, steering conditions are starting to allow it to make its curve. And the latest trend on this is east northeast. So that little northerly component, very important, telling me it is on track. And then it will be more to the east northeast and then eventually northeast, making move right toward uh, Florida. So it is on track. I'm Watching every subtle move with this, of course. Uh, still a very powerful hurricane. Winds 140 to about 160 on that. That's going to be the fluctuation over the next uh, a day or so. Uh, so category four, category five. Now it's so strong that it goes through these eye wall replacements. Uh, the inner eye kind of sucks out all the uh, energy. Uh, and then an outer eye wall kind of closes in. And in that process, the winds go down. And then once it gets its act back together, it strengthens further. So fluctuations over the next day or so. And as I've been showing you this track, I uh, haven't made much changes at all with that. Uh, later today, again, winds near 150, give or take 5, 10 miles per hour. Should be near 125 at landfall uh, near Anna Maria Island over toward the Tampa Bay area. Maybe a little bit more to the north, maybe a little more to the south near Sarasota. But remind, uh, uh, be mindful, this is a large system. The wind field is actually going to expand. As the winds go down a touch because of a front to the north, the wind field actually expands. And that's why a lot of us are going to be feeling the impacts out of this. And it will still be a hurricane on the flip side of Florida. That's how strong this is. It will go through central Florida as a hurricane off the Space Coast. Still on Thursday, winds around 75 miles per hour. All right, so this thing is a monster. It is a monster beyond anything that anybody has ever seen. And I'm right in the path. <laughs> and I'll be reporting on it. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, all right, maybe I'll make a video as I'm going down the sewer with my cell phone going, ah! All right, so anyway, um, but, you know, I, I, you know, I did notice, don't, don't call me crazy. I live in a retirement community, and everybody else is sheltering in place. All right, I think I'm much more prepared than them, but we're all, we're all here. Let's just keep going. Uh, I did, I made a hiking video, uh, because after I uh, dropped my vote off, it does run me by a place that I like to hike. Uh, and I just talk about things. And I wanted to talk about, uh, and, you know, I, well, let's let the video speak for itself. So before the storm hits, I wanted to try to get a hike in. Uh, this ain't looking good. <laughs> this, this is the beginning of the Florida Trail. And uh, the problem is when the weeds are this high, it's still tick season, so I'm going to have to check myself for bugs when I get home. But I uh, just wanted to show you what it's looking like. Boy, this hike is getting crazy, isn't it? <laughs> I, I'm probably going to get another parasite in my body. By the way, I've been taking uh, willow bark to try to get the parasites out of my body from the last hike that I did and stupid stuff like this. But uh, anyway, uh, my vote is cast. And uh, so I, I do what I say and I say what I do. I'm just like Putin. By the way, I wanted you to check this out. Look at that. Don't want to put your hand or step in that, do you? <laughs>
<laughs> that could be a very painful experience. Isn't it cool looking down the railroad tracks? How many stories, how many books have been written about the railroads? Look at that wobble in the tracks up there. Folks, if you didn't know, a lot of people think, oh, those people are just going to sit there and die. They're going to die. Oh, my God, you wouldn't believe it. Five million people are evacuating the uh, zones where uh, they've been told to evacuate. 75 is a nightmare. I took me almost two hours to drive in <laughs> to cast my vote because I wanted to get it in just in case my house floods. Uh, and that's how important I consider my vote. I hope you do, too. I, I do think that... Well, if Trump doesn't win, that this country is over. We'll be a communist, Marxist, Democrat hellhole, just like San Francisco, or I hear Chicago's gone to hell. I, in fact, I, I heard that the, the, the Muslims, I, I don't want to criticize Muslims, but I'm just saying that uh, they, they put up a, a flag there and took down the American flag, from what I understand. I mean, holy shit. I mean, we, we are in a deep, deep trouble if the Democrats win. So uh, I hope I told, I put out that emergency video and I told everybody to vote now. Vote now! Even Elon Musk said, vote now! Uh, now what are those, I, I bet those five million people that are on the road evacuating haven't cast their ballot. And I call it a ballot, it's not really a vote these days. You know, you just gotta, gotta get it in. Anyway, uh, I guess uh, we'll get into the news here in just a bit, but I do want to encourage you to go over to The Burn, The Burn on Rumble. Now, I've I've stolen another video, uh, and I say stolen, I mean, I, I don't like just copying other people's work unless I figure it's profound. And uh, General Flynn, who, by the way, I was supporting back in 2000 on Parlor when I had 54,000 followers, uh, I he gave an interview and uh, I, I'm not going to post it on YouTube obviously but I will be posting it on Rumble at the Burn channel on Rumble and if you want to watch that because it was a it was probably the greatest uh, description of what's taking place in North Carolina of any individual who is informed because you have to understand even though General Flynn was was ostracized and, and cast out you know, imagine, <laughs> I, want to, I want to compare him to, to, to the poor angel that got cast out of heaven, you know, whatever. Uh, but, you know, he's still got a lot of contacts, and he's got a lot of good information, and you're going to want to watch that if you want to know what the rest of the story is. Now, you know, I'm deep, deep in the forest. And normally I don't hear any car noise in this location. So I'm going to be real quiet. I mean, we've got 5 million people evacuating. Uh, going up 75, which I'm a long ways from 75. But also, you know, that way is uh, what's called Mary Camp Road. I'm just going to be quiet. I want you to kind of listen. We are miles from anything. Listen to the car noise. You know, from this point on, I'll just let you enjoy the trail rather than looking at my ugly mug because I am wiped out after working 24 hours to get ready for Hurricane Milton or whatever it's called. Anyway, uh, 600, 600 million dollars was spent by FEMA to relocate illegal aliens into the United States. FEMA is broke. So, Floridians, you're on your own. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be no help from the federal government. They can give $200 billion. I mean, people, I mean, is, is anybody that watches my videos, I want you to think about things. $200 plus billion dollars goes to Ukraine. 
God knows how much we've given Israel. I mean, we've been dropping off 2,000 pound bombs like they're candy. October 7th is where history changed, where the Palestinians stood up and said, no more. But to okay. pretend that suddenly October 7th is where it all begins is ludicrous. Israel was bombing Hezbollah well before this. Israel was blowing up Iranian scientists well before this. Israel, the scourge of humanity, October 7th, was Liberation Day for the Palestinians, not a day defined by so-called crimes against Israel. Israel is in itself a criminal enterprise. You can't commit a crime against a criminal enterprise. And, and we're, we're funding them. We own them. We fund them. We make everything happen. But as with anything, you know, parasitic relationship, um, the parasites have taken over our body. They own us now. They're running Congress. They're running the presidency. They run the media. They run everything. I know people go, my God, that's how anti-Semitic. You prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Show me one example of a mainstream media outlet daring to stand up to the crimes committed by Israel today. One example you can't. Find me a politician um, in the Biden administration that does it. The only one that did was a diplomat who resigned. And she's in tears every day. She talks about the crimes committed by her government on the Palestinian people. No, unfortunately, we have been taken over by that which we created, including the Ukrainians. I just want to remind your audience that in 1948, the CIA began a relationship with the organization Ukrainian nationalists that step on Bandera's murderous Nazi allies that continues to this day. We created an entity to do what? Well, to undermine the Soviet Union. Now, that sounds academic, doesn't it? Copacetic, to undermine. How did they undermine? By murdering, raping, and butchering women and children, funded by the CIA. And then when they were defeated, we kept breathing life into their organization, funding them, continuing, bringing them into diaspora in Ellenville, New York, right down the road. Cindy, I'll take you there someday if you want to watch me beat the crap out of people. Because if I go back there, I cannot constrain myself. They have a hill of heroes. On that hill are statues to four men, side by side, Stepan Bandera, Ramon Shukovich, men who butchered people. Let me tell you the story of the little village of Adami in Poland, actually in Western Ukraine now, where Bandera's people surrounded the village in 1943 and butchered the women and children and the men there as they sleep. They went into each home. And they literally tore babies while they were alive apart, physically ripped them apart in front of the mother, who they had nailed to the table. And then they butchered her, eviscerated her in front of her husband, who they then chopped into little pieces. Now, the screams were horrible, but you know how they drowned out the screams? The next time you look at one of these wonderful little Ukrainian women choirs, understand that they had assembled a choir of Ukrainian women to sing songs to drown out the screams of the people being murdered by the Banderas, who we continue to support and empower in office today in Ukraine. We support murderers in Ukraine. We support murderers in Israel. We have done so from the very beginning. Uh, and they're dropping them everywhere. I mean, they, they're, they're killing civilians at a record pace that's never been known in the history of the world. You know, I mean, the entire world is going up in flames. If you watch any of my videos, you'll understand that. That, that uh, genocidal maniac Netanyahu, oh my God, don't even get me started. But, uh, so we can't even come up with a few million dollars <laughs> to help U.S. citizens. I, you know, this federal government has to go. Where are your pitchforks and knives, people? Where are your pitchforks and knives? My God, and we got we got people like Bill Gates and well John Kerry saying that the First Amendment shouldn't exist. Uh, the Democrats saying that there's such a thing as hate speech. Or misinformation. There is no misinformation, people. There's only bad information. And guess what? It's up to you to figure out what's good and what's bad. Yes, I understand you're going to be misled. Yes, through life, you're going to get ripped off. Yes, people are going to lie to you. Okay? That's a fact of life. That's not hate speech. That's not misinformation. That is you being uninformed. And you have to go out and get your facts where you can. I mean, just take, for example, me casting my ballot today. There were a whole huge list of judges that I needed to vote on. 
But the thing is, I don't even know where to research that. I mean, where do I get information on a bunch of judges? And, and why, why are judges being voted on the ballot? I mean, judges should be decided by our representatives who know a thing or two. Of course, if you're a Democrat, <laughs> they're dumber than a bag of stones. <laughs> they're a vacuous meat puppet. But anyway, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, how in the hell am I supposed to know anything about a bunch of judges? So I, I, to get my vote in, to make sure it gets counted, I just left it all blank. And you know what? That's, that's another thing for you. You know, if you, uh, if you don't know your candidate, if you don't know anything about an amendment, just leave it blank, man. Let the people that know something about it decide the issue for you. Now, I understand that the Democrats, they're a lot better at making sure people vote a certain way than the Republicans are. That's for damn sure. But, you know, here's another thing for you. So, so what about Republicans? Mike Johnson, I'm going to call that son of a bitch out. Mike Johnson approved the bill that gave $600 million to relocate illegal aliens. The, de the Republicans voted on that. So don't think that Mike Johnson isn't a freaking Democrat. Gosh dang it. How do we get these freaking rhinos into Congress? Get that son of a gun out right now. Just for voting for $600 million to relocate illegal aliens. The Republicans are in control of the House. They control the purse strings. They control the budget. Oh, my God. Well, at least I hope you're enjoying the view while I'm on my rant. I think I scared away every deer <laughs> that I might have been able to see. All right, we'll keep going. All right, I wanted you to think about something here. The Dow was up 120 points. Which indicates to me, there is no, <laughs> yeah, I gave up, you know, I used to look at P.E. ratios and study the uh, insider trades and everything on stocks. I just, I, I, people, I just sold all my stock. I said to hell with it. Uh, if anything you want to do, just follow Johnny Bravo and do swing trading. I mean, that's a, it's just a freaking gambling uh, uh, casino now. It's, it's, it doesn't represent the worth of these companies. I mean, Warren Buffett for years invested in companies that, that he knew were going to do well and, and, and you know, pay, pay dividends. And that, that, those days are over. I mean, look at, look at the world right now. You just had Hurricane Helene come through and do billions upon billions of dollars. I don't even know what the assessment is. You know, we, we've got, well, I mean, the, the, there's all kinds of wild figures flying about the internet. I mean, uh, Redacted says there's 4,000 body bags that have been ordered because they ran out of body bags. I mean, good God. Uh, upwards of 2,000 people are dead. You know, FEMA is broke because they gave all the money to the illegal aliens. You got uh, Israel saying they're going to bomb, 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 bomb Iran. Bomb, 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 bomb Iran. Anyway, and so you got all this shit. You got, of course, you got the war in Ukraine that is lost now. The Russians are just rolling over the Ukrainians, killing them by the thousands each day. And yet your stock market goes up. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you want to participate in that casino, or if you've got a 401k or, or any sort of investment, this is not financial advice. I'm just saying you might want to think about things. That's all. Just think about it. Always want to get the weird stuff on the video. What is that, a grasshopper eating another grasshopper? Somebody tell me. Look at him. Kind of weird, huh? I'm on my way back, but I just wanted to talk about something for just one minute. A lot of people would say, why in the hell did you take two hours out of your day to drive, well, more than that, three hours, to go and just cast a vote? Folks, you understand how important your vote is? I mean, I, imagine, you know, $600 million has gone to illegal aliens because of the way that people voted. Okay? Now, I could be one of the victims of this hurricane. Let's say my house floods and I'm going to be in need of help. Well, guess what? We gave it all to the illegal aliens <laughs> because of the way you vote. So I just wanted to just talk about the fact that how important it is to pay attention as much as you can. I understand you got you got kids, you got things going on. 
you know, but I'm just saying you got to pay attention to the world around you and do the best you can and cast your vote wisely because it will impact you. Look at me. At least when I don't get any aid from FEMA, I know that I did the best I could. And then I can say, well, it wasn't my fault. It was a bunch of meat puppet Democrats that cost everybody their homes here in Florida. Always got to get the weird stuff on the videos. Where in the hell did these damn, is that a chicken or a rooster? Just hanging out here in the park? Of course, here comes a kid getting ready to chase the birds. <laughs> look, look at the birds running from the kid. There's the kid. Look at that. That's crazy, isn't it? There they go, off into the woods. That's crazy. All right, so that was all my hiking video, and I didn't want it to get into too much craziness. Uh, but then we've got, uh, we finally had somebody call out an official <laughs> in the in the Biden administration. I tell you what, I love the gray zone. I, I'm sure that you probably don't know who the hell they are. Uh, it's Mac, Max Blumenthal and uh, his team. Uh, but this is this is the gray zone calling out uh, the Biden administration on the genocide in Gaza. Go ahead. So uh, Israel is still poised to strike Iran. And in July, Blinken said that Iran was one to two weeks away from developing a nuclear weapon. So I guess for all we know, they might have one by now. And meanwhile, in Ukraine, they've struck deep within Russian territory several times, as deep as 300 miles from the border. And in that case, we don't have to guess. We know that Russia has the largest nuclear arsenal on the planet, as many as 6,000 warheads. And so one of the risks of arming militaries that are striking in the territories of nuclear powers is that one, one of those gets deployed and then it could escalate very quickly from there. So it's rarely discussed, but it's important to address that the nuclear risk is real and it could very abruptly mean the end of you know what humans have worked for thousands of years to collectively achieve and uh, us today are very lucky to live in with the fruits of that achievement and i feel like we're treating the risk kind of brazenly so my question for you is you know we often hear in response to these concerns that well putin khomeini you know they're war criminals they're terrorists uh as if they're too inherently evil or immoral for us to negotiate with but Meanwhile, this administration has financed a genocide in Gaza for the last year, and every day you're up there denying okay. accountability for it. So, I mean, okay. what gives you the right to lecture other countries on their moral... So, if you have a policy question for me, I'm happy to take it. If you want to give a speech, no, but there are I plenty mean, of places in Washington where you can give a speech. Yeah, but people are, are sick of the bullshit in here. I mean, like, it is okay. a genocide. I'm gonna you go are abetting it, another question. and you go are ahead. risking well, nuclear war in Ukraine plenty, for this plenty proxy Plenty of other places to give a speech. Go ahead. Thank you, Matt. All right, so there was that video... Uh, now, I've been telling you that a lot of people are getting banned off of YouTube at the moment. And uh, it's it's really bad. And uh, and so one of the people that I watch is Rachel. Uh, I, I very rarely, I mean, I this is this is just one example. Uh, let, let's watch her video right now. It is October 7th, 2024. And if you're watching this video, then I know you're not watching it on YouTube because my channel has been deleted from there. But it is a very uncertain time in media. And I think one of the reasons why we're seeing this current YouTube crackdown is because of the fact that the Biden administration rolled out a new round of sanctions last month. So you see Meta, go through and completely cut off any RT or Sputnik related channels, delete them off of its platforms. Now you're seeing a crackdown coming from YouTube that appears to be on anyone who is RT adjacent, right? They're going after any sort of contributors. They're going after people who have appeared on the network, who they see as having any kind of ties to Archie and Spetnik, which I think is really interesting because, you know, we just saw in recent months this indictment that was handed down by the Biden administration where they were going after a certain media company based in Tennessee. Okay, and uh, and so now we'll, we'll finish off the uh, the video with... The bombing that just took place in Syria. Peace out. Stay free. Well, we are going to start off uh, in Syria, where at least seven civilians have been killed in an Israeli strike on the capital, Damascus. That's according to the Syrian Defense Ministry. 
At around 8.15 Damascus time, the Israeli enemy targeted a residential and commercial building in the densely populated Miza neighborhood of Damascus, with three missiles from the side of the occupied Golan Heights, resulting in the killing of seven civilians and 11 more injuries. The rescue operation is ongoing to save people under the rubble. Local media outlets earlier reported that the attack targeted an area that houses security headquarters and embassies, including Iran's. Israel has not yet commented. Tehran, however, has said no Iranian citizens are among the victims. The IDF has bombed Syria several times since the Gaza war erupted a year ago. Well, we discussed all this with Syrian academic Isabella Zaidan, as well as journalist and political commentator Stephen Sahuni. <laughs> They're always uh, excuse that they're trying to target Iranians, tar trying to target uh, Hezbollah leaders. That's their uh, scenario every time. They've been bombing Syria for 14 years. This is a civilian neighborhood. This is uh, p uh, the majority of the people who are killed, according to media reports, are uh, civilians, men, women, and children. A uh, high number of children and women. It's a crowded neighborhood at this time of the day. It's all about ethnic cleansing. They are trying to cleanse people. They are trying to get to kill as many people as they could because they are aiming at this land. We can never believe this pathetic excuse of a lie that they are there to, uh, to combat uh, the, what they call terrorism to combat, uh, to defend themselves, even the naming of their, even the naming of their army, that it's uh, the uh, uh, defense army, it's a lie, because it gives the impl Im implication that they are defending themselves, and while they are just attacking every neighbor they have, every neighboring country they have. Benjamin Netanyahu, of course, he can extend this war. And of course, he can uh, fight 10 countries at the same time, as long as he, uh, he has an open bank, and that's the American taxpayer, and he has the uh, American uh, weapon factories uh, giving him weapons. So he can keep fighting for 10 years. It's not Israelis paying the money uh, and uh, the equipment. It is the American taxpayer. That's why they keep doing wars. They keep killing people. And the Americans, because the American... Uh, State Department and the Deep State and the American White House, they are all uh, working and employees for APAC and the, the Zionists inside of Washington, D.C. And listening to them like they want Lebanon to be free, uh, that's a complete lie. I would just repeat what my fellow uh, Syrian uh, Stephen said. They are just aiming at, at killing as many civilians as they could. Why did they bomb the border line between Syria and Lebanon? Why didn't why don't they want people to flee to flee the horrors, their horrors, their attacks? Because they are trying to put to corner people there and kill as many as they could because that's their plan.